you fight by saying aye. 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 We have an agenda. One of you gentlemen would like to take that item? Uh, I can, if you like, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, to discuss the proposals for Central Garage and make recommendations to the City Council. Second. Okay, we have that motion. Second. I assume we have a presentation. Yep, uh, I'll just go over the bids quick here. So just to familiarize you with the Central Garage, if you're not too familiar with it, um, it's located at 1326 Blackhawk Street. It was the former location of um, Central or Central Garage um, prior to uh, what we have over off of MLK Drive. Um, we did go out for bid for uh, report or proposals for the um, structure or the lot, I should say. Um, we went out for bid, I believe. Um, I'm not quite sure if you guys received a copy of the RFP or not, but um, if you would like one, we can easily get one to you too. We did receive two bids on it. Um, the structure itself is approximately uh, 7,400 square feet in size. There's a little, little over 1,100 square feet of office area, and then the rest is actually warehouse or the actual garage area. Um, we did receive two proposals. One, um, the first one was from Nihad Masik, excuse me if I pronounce that name, um, and his partner, John Sarwar. Um, they did offer 175000 for that um, structure for the entire property, and their proposal was, or their intent was to open a repair shop or an automotive repair shop, and they would also inst be installing four lifts for that. Um, I, I believe Noel had initially passed out all of the proposals that we had received. So um, their timeline, they said it would just take a couple of months for them to set up and be able to set up shop and get everything going for them. Um, financing, they had that all lined up um, with both of them. Um, and then just basically it was a mechanic repair service automotive shop is what they were proposing for the use. Um, the second proposal was received from Jim Scarless. He did bid $198,000 um, for the entire property, and his bid did include um, a proposed plan for uh, what he would propose to do to these structures um, as far as renovations and whatnot. So he did estimate that the cost for the renovations would be between 100000 and 200000 That would include inside and outside of what he would want to do to the uh, property the timeline. It would take approximately six months um, after acquisition, uh, obviously weather permitting. And then um, there would be 10 jobs located at this position or at this project site, and it was self-financed. So he also did include, like I stated, um, just some simple plans of what he would plan on doing for that structure. Um, we did have a minimum bid on the proposal of 165000 so both bids did come in over our minimum uh, bid. And um, I guess, uh, did you have any questions, additional questions for me at this time? Or any discussion? I, I was thinking that the... Um the minimum bid was 175, but it doesn't make any difference. We've met that anyway. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, I do know the building requires a great deal of work. Correct. Yep. And the current assessed. Sorry, not to go ahead. Cut you off, but the current assessed value was approximately 233 thousand um, dollars, and we did lower that minimum bid to uh, allow for um, just because we knew there was some maintenance that needed to be done on the building. Sure. Oh, I see. Mr. Scarless has had an architect involved in. Yeah. and doing some drawings of the building. Yep. Um, I'm certainly with leaning towards Mr. Scarless's bid, not only because it his bid is higher, but what he intends to do with the building, and maybe he has the wherewithal to do the needed repairs that mm -hmm. it's going to take to bring this building up to the standards that we require. Mm -hmm. I, that would be my recommendation to sell it to Jim Scarlett. Well, um, as, as far as looking uh, through these, uh, I mean, just the numbers speak for themselves, and then the intent of what they plan to do with it speaks for itself, too. So I would second that, um, Mr. Welper. If we're going to take a vote as a committee, I would second your motion to uh, go with the uh, offer from Mr. Scarlett. Adrian, do you know, is this going to be involved with his uh, 
siding and home improvement business rather than the car business from the looks of it? Um, I Do believe we know that? so, but okay. I, I can't tell you definitely for sure on that. But yeah, he yeah. there was no mention of an automotive aspect to it when he was went in discussions with him. So then, no, we would have a building eventually with an assessed value of two fifty, three hundred thousand, depending on what he does with it. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. We'll definitely work with the assessor's office to show them these plans and, and find out what they believe the assessed value would be, um, enter into a development agreement, set for data hearing, and, and go through the full council with your recommendation. Mm -hmm. Somebody in the, did you have something else you were going to say? Oh, I was going to say last week, actually, I did go through the building with the assessor's office, so they're updating their records at the moment, but I can also pass along these to them, and they'll uh, kind of reevaluate re and give us an estimate on that, too. Okay. At some previous discussion about this building, there was something brought up about the, is there a generator? There's something unique about this building. There was a, there were some, some items that were taken out of there. One of those, uh, there was a generator they were going to move to the library upon further review of, of transferring that over to that. It did not work um, for the, what they needed at the library. So I believe they left the generator there. Mm -hmm. I've been in the building. There's nothing in it. I was going to say, I, I was thinking it was behind the building. I didn't think it was in the building. The generator? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. But they were going to move that generator to the library, and so they'd left it at the site, I should say. Yeah. Gotcha. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. What, one of the other uh, pluses with the Scarless uh, proposal is uh, he talks about adding 10 jobs right. uh, to our uh, workforce. So. Yeah, you betcha. That's a good thing. Okay, any uh, other council members have any questions? Mr. Or Chairman. Yes, sir. Just a comment, um, Jim Starlos would have bought that two years ago at probably that same or higher price. I don't know we, why we sat on this thing for this long. Um, next time we get one of these buildings, we need to immediately sell the darn thing if we're not going to use it. Ms. Powers, you have anything? Ms. Tramis? Okay. All right, we have a uh, motion to move this along. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Good deal. Here we go. Motion for adjournment. Second. A motion is second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you.
Yes. Okay. <coughs> Let's call a human resources committee to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Mr. Wilper. Here. Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Morrissey. Here. Mr. Powers. Here. Mr. Lynn. Here. Mr. Amos. Here. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Motion to approve the agenda is proposed. Second. We have a motion, a second on the agenda. Questions? Carrying none. All in favor say aye. 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 Same sign. That motion passes. We have three requests today. Let's take them one at a time. If somebody would take that first one. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Amos. Uh, number one is a motion to request from Waste Management Services Director for authorization to begin civil service process to create a list and make appointment for a CMOM coordinator. Second. second. Okay, we have a motion, a second on a request for a CMOM coordinator. Is there any questions or discussion in regards to that? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Is this, so I'm a little bit confused, is this a replacement? I thought we had a CMOM person. Is that person doing something else? Or I guess I'd like a little overview on it, please. Steve. Steve Holmbrecker, Waste Management Service. <laughs> Maybe I should try that one. Yep. That one, that one didn't work too good. We got time. Huh? Yep. We got time. We I got said everything you needed to know, didn't you? I didn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> you got to speak up. Yeah. Okay. Again, Steve Holmbrecker, Waste Management Services Director. Uh, within the, the Waste Management Department, we've had two CMOM positions. One was called a specialist. One was called a CMOM technician. And what I'm looking to do is take the CMOM specialist position and essentially change that to a CMOM coordinator. Uh, that is creating a slight downsizing in the position, but it seems to, in my opinion, seems to fit within the means of our department better. Uh, one, it brings it back into the, to the 177 union versus ASME, where the previous position, originally it was not in either of those, but it became part of the ASME uh, engineering management group within the last year. So that's the, essentially what we're doing is taking the currently vacant CMOM specialist position and kind of restructuring and putting it into the CMOM coordinator position, creating a CMOM coordinator position, which I think better fits within the overall department structure and has a slight pay reduction. Did you have okay. something? No, oh. I just asked it. In, um, is this required by the uh, DOJ agreement? There is aspects. Our CMOM manual, which is kind of a, a sub part of the DOJ or the consent decree agreement, requires us to have special, have appropriate staffing. And this will be restructuring that staffing to a certain extent. Previously, we had two people. We'll still expect to have two people and just restructuring it with the open CMOM specialist position at this time. Didn't we have just one person for a period of time? Well, prior to several years ago, I know we had so that would have been probably just DOJ probably the CMOM specialist position. But as we at for the time I've been in for probably the last two or three years, we've had the CMOM specialist and the CMOM technician position. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we need a roll call, please. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? No. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Okay, the request is motion passes. Number two. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to approve the request from Waste Management Services Director to initiate the civil service process to fill a position of instrument control technician or ICT. Second. Second. We have a motion, a second on a request to the ICT. Any questions in this position? As long as it's at the mic, can we have a little overview on this too? <laughs> Want some more? Yes, Steve. <laughs> if you would, please. The, uh, we have four positions in the instrument control technician, one foreman and three technicians. Uh, we've had a vacancy in the foreman position and the three, uh, Technicians, both all three applied for that job. Uh, we are awaiting official. They've done all the testing. Officially, they will be have to, need to have approval from the Civil Service Commission, of which we will appoint one of those three. And this position will 
what I'm asking for now will uh, fill their vacant position. So the form, excuse me, go ahead. Does that make sense? Uh, so has the foreman position been filled? Or you're gonna fill it with one of these three? One of these, one of the existing three people will fill that position. We're just, the irony of the timing is when we officially had the interviews, the civil service met at 7.30 that morning and we met at nine o'clock to do the interviews, trying to get between all the uh, interview staff and the, with, with summer vacations, getting everybody there to have the interview. So the next civil service commission, they will approve a list and from that I will appoint and there will be a vacancy. So by the time we get this through the process, there, there will be a vacancy. So how long has the foreman's position been open? Uh, officially since July. And it's a position we have to have. These three I, I feel that we need... These three couldn't report to somebody else. Well, we talked about that before when we had the maintenance foreman position. Yeah. So that, that was the question. That's, uh, you know, like I said at that time, that was something I considered. But the, the, the two are definitely different. One's more of the maintenance, and these people take care of all the instrumentation controls, the electrical stuff. So they do, in my opinion, still need uh, separate foreman and a separate job title and then should we or did we need to go outside to advertise for this position or not necessarily the position I'm asking the foreman position uh, basically the as I understand it when you have a family like we're calling it the instrumentation family then we need to, through the civil process, unless none of those three are qualified, we need to uh, hire from within. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Morales. Mr. Holmbrecher, I was just wondering, uh, is this uh, a position uh, when one of those three is promoted into the foreman position, is this a position that's, that is easily filled or is it going to result in a long delay in getting that filled? Well, only time will tell once we get the process started, but I think my gut tells me that we will hopefully have uh, somewhat a series of qualified applicants, other people that are doing somewhat similar electrical, uh, you know, have an electrical background with knowledge of instrumentation control. So. I do believe it'll take at least two to three months to get the position filled. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? We have a motion and a second. We need a roll call, please. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Morsey? Yes. That motion passes, number three. Mr. Um, Chairman? Mr. Morsey? like to make a motion to approve the request from Waste Management Services Director to initiate the process to fill a position and make an appointment for Assistant Director Collection Systems Maintenance. Second. We have a motion and a second on this request. Any questions in regards to this? Can we have another overview, please? If you like. Once again, Steve Holmbrecher, Waste Management Services Director. Uh, this is a position that was, has, was recently filled in the, within the past six months. Uh, there's been a vacancy in that position. I can honestly say during the time that the position was filled that there was a definite need for this position and what the person was accomplishing. And uh, a side benefit to this is also trying to find, potentially find somebody that somewhere down the road that they can step into my shoes, thus the assistant director, collection system, supervisor. So this is a position we hired in the last year and we had 17 applicants and we did one interview, correct? Well, we had 12. 12. 12 and applicants. Did, and we did one and interview. Again, I'll kind of reiterate what I said the, the first time we had, like I said, 12 applicants and the one individual we did hire from myself as well as the committee, and we also through the hiring process reached out and had somebody from the Waterworks and somebody from AECOM also interview the one candidate we felt was very qualified, and in my opinion, while that person was here, he, he demonstrated very much his qualifications that, that we observed 
uh, in the resume and in the recruitment process. I mean, it just seems like we've had conversations about, you know, we may have opportunities to do a little downsizing, for lack of a better term, or a little more efficient operation or something, but it seems like when we get to that point, we just can't quite pull the trigger. Um, is that a fair assessment or? I mean, you probably been, defends what side of the fence you're on. Yeah. Uh, I don't think, well, I'm on the know, tax, I think if there I'm are on the opportunities, one needs to look at it. Yeah. I don't think this is the, the place to do that. I mean, it, I get, from my point of view, I think in the short time I've been here trying to fill this level of various positions does take time and, and sometimes requires uh, multiple recruitments. Um, and I think thus, in part, why we felt we had one good candidate and brought that person in and that person passed the, not only the, we did a phone interview in that case and we followed up with an on-site interview and, and uh, everybody that, that was part of the interview process felt that he would be a good candidate and, and he actually, in my opinion, was a very good candidate. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. If he was such a good candidate, why did, who made the decision to fire him? Was that the mayor? Or, I mean, it sounded to me from talking to the city attorney and others that we needed him down there and he was doing a good job. Is this a political hatchet job by somebody or what happened? I, Mr. Chairman. I, I, go ahead, please. Mr. Chairman, I find. Mr. Chairman, this, I'm talking. I thought you had finished, Councilman Lynn. I asked a question. I'm Who, waiting who's, for an answer. Okay, go ahead. Are you, are I'm you waiting for the answer? Are you done? Yes. You're, you're waiting for an answer. You're saying? Yes. Going to answer. answer my question, Mr. Chairman. I was just going to make a point of order that this is a request to hire. It's not a discussion of what happened in the past to a former employee. I, I would ask that you chair rule that this is not germane to the subject at hand. I would have to agree to that, Mr. Morrison. Any further discussion on this matter? Hearing none, I need a roll call, please, on number three. Mr. Lind? Nope. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. The motion passes. Motion adjourned. Second. Motion to second on adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Bruce, Bruce, you ready? Let's call our finance committee to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Welper? Here. Mr. Chairman, I move for approval of the agenda and the minutes of August 28, 2017, as proposed. Second. We have a motion a second on the agenda and the minutes. Any questions or discussion on either of those items? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. same sign. That motion passes. We want to take the travel requests. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll take the travel. Rudy Jones, Matt Chessbor, Angie Forty, Forta B has amended uh, the class uh, meeting 
of 2017 of lead hazard control, health, healthy homes, new grantee orientation in Washington, D.C., September 18th through the 22nd, amount not to exceed 5,500. Pascal Monin, artist and guest speaker at the, uh, for the guest speaker, featured visiting artist, Haitian Art Society Conference, destination is Waterloo. The amount, or the dates are the 16th, September 16th through the 25th, amount not to exceed $1,665. Jordan Weber, performance artist, uh, to come to Waterloo, uh, Vertigo, performance art series, destination Waterloo, Center of the Arts, October 19th through the 21st, amount not to exceed $125. Andrew Leo Stansbury, performance artist with a program, Vertigo Performance Art Series, Destination Waterloo, Center of the Arts. Dates October 26th through the 28th, 2017, amount not to exceed $125. Chelsea Kuhn, performance artist, the Vertigo Performance Art Series destination coming to the Waterloo Center for the Arts, November 2nd through the 4th, 2017, amount not to exceed $125. Greg Denner, facility specialist, uh, building operator certification destination is Ames. Dates, various dates through January 2018. Mount not to exceed $1,695. Investigator Gergen, Divine, and Sad, or Sad and Hagman to attend federal court destination is in New Albany, New York, or Indiana. Dates August 7th through the 9th, 2017. Amount not to exceed $488.27. Keith Kasperi, Director of Aviation, to attend a meeting, Aviation Air Service Forum, destination Pasco, Washington, October 16th through the 19th, amount not to exceed $2,300. Jesse Garrity, Maintenance Foreman, to attend a meeting, Environmental Federation of Technical Expedition, Exhibition Conference, Technical Exhibition Only, destination of Chicago. Dates October 3rd through the 4th, amount not to exceed $105. Wendy Bowman to attend the Iowa League of Cities Annual Conference in the Quad Cities, September 27th through the 29th, amount not to exceed $305. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on all the travel requests. Any questions in any of those? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion is passed. Uh, Prioths. Mr. Chairman, Prioths to expend over $1,000. Fire Department, $7,480.80 plus $756. Shipping handling for a pickup pack for the new commander vehicle. Leisure services, $1,699. Long sleeve football uniform shirts for participants in our flag football program. Leisure services, $4,037.50. T-shirts for participants in the Mayor's Fun Run. Leisure services, $2,300 plus $125 shipping handling for the refurbished Steermaster SM5 step mill. Planning zoning, $4,325 for asbestos removal of 1005 and 1017 Chalmers Avenue. Police, $6,397. Renewal of the SNS. Bemware uh, Server Foundation and vSphere Agreement. Sewer uh, agree, uh, Department, $1,599 for the Vice Combination Pipe Bench Tool for Maintenance Repair Work. Uh, sewer Department, $14,877.96 plus $400 shipping and handling. Four sets of replacement parts for Muffin Monster Grinders. In traffic operations, $10,573 for one TC19253 cabinet, controller, and accessories to replace damaged equipment at the intersection of Broadway and Highway 218 ramp. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on all the pre-offs. Any questions on any of those items? 
Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion passes. We have three budget line item amendments which are on file at the city clerk's office. And within that are the bills payment. The bills payment this week are $2,949,121.38. That's 2 comma 949 comma 121.38. Second. Motion a second on the bills payment. Any questions on that? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion a second on adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Everyone, uh, I'd like to welcome you to the September 5th City Council meeting. Madam Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Welper? Here. All right, thank you. Uh, uh, this is our first uh, council meeting of the month, and uh, we have prayer and invocation at that time. We have Pastor Morris Anderson from New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, so if you would uh, please step to the podium. We give people the option to stand or sit. It is your option. And I've, I've also asked uh, Pastor Anderson in his presentation uh, to remember uh, our had a tough week with regards to our fire services, uh, um, firefighter Greg Freshwater, and also uh, firefighter Bert um, passed as well, and we had ceremonies for both this weekend. Pastor Anderson. Let us pray. Father, we do thank you again for another day that you have made, and we give you all glory and honor. And first, God, we lift up the fire department, and we lift up those who have 
lost loved ones, uh, even the lives of those in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we even pray now that you would release peace over the department, over the families and the family members and friends, even in this moment in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord God, we lift up this council to you, the city council, the mayor and his council, and those, those that make up this mighty council of the city of Waterloo. And Father God, we just pray right now, peace, we pray, unity, we pray, discernment in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we come against anything that will try to bring in division. And Father God, come against the plan of this great city. Father God, we release your wisdom right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, sir. Uh, this evening's pledge will be led by Ken Shanko, our Director of Cultural and Arts Commission. Please join me in reciting our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, Kent. And thank you, Pastor Anderson. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as amended and under public hearings, um, item number four. Uh, it is correct electronically, but on hard copy it should read, vacate, sell, and convey city-owned property located adjacent to 2014 Blackhawk Street in the amount of $800 to Dwayne Eilers. Second. And within that, uh, also the minutes of August 28th, 2017, regular session as proposed. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, first up on our agenda is we have a swearing in of a Waterloo Fire Rescue, rescue Recruit, Andrew Mostelka. Uh, so could you, I didn't get that right? No, you did better than I would do. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Sir. Sir, hello. All right, how are you, buddy? <laughs> All right, so uh, <laughs> it's a great honor uh, this evening. Um, but before we do this portion of it, would you like to let us know a little bit of know about the um, fire recruit? Sure, thanks, Mayor, and uh, thanks, Council. We're uh, always excited when we swear in a new uh, fire recruit. And uh, Andrew Hostuckle is coming to us. Um, he's a, a Waterloo uh, native, per se. He was born in Des Moines, uh, grew up in Cedar Falls, graduated from uh, Cedar Falls High School in 2005, attended the DMAC in Ankeny for HVAC uh, certificate program, did that for two years. Moved to Shell Rock and uh, joined the Shell Rock Volunteer Fire Department there where he got his Firefighter 1 certification along with his EMTB. He served there for nine years before moving to Denver, uh, where he joined the fire department there, and uh, impressively got his paramedic certification while on with Denver. He was also a, a full-time employee at Deer and Company, where he worked second shift uh, at the foundry and maintenance. So we're real excited to bring Andrew on. He's got the skill set uh, that we're <coughs> looking for. He's a nationally registered paramedic. Uh, he's also a state registered paramedic. So we think he brings a skill set that he'll uh, First day on the job, we'll be able to contribute because of his training and his experience. With him here is his wife, uh, Lisa, and uh, their son, Lloyd and Miles. And uh, in the audience are his parents and uh, in-laws. So we're just real excited to have him on. And he's been assigned to B-Shift, and uh, he's already rolling. So we'll have you swear him in. It's the best shift. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, would you uh, raise your right hand? So I, state your name, I, Andrew Hostelka, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Iowa, and I will faithfully and impartially, and I will faithfully and impartially, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, discharge all the duties, discharge all the duties, of the position of firefighter, 
in the city of Waterloo, in the city of Waterloo Black, Hawk County, Iowa, Black Hawk County, Iowa, as now or hereafter required by law. As now or hereafter required by law. All right, congratulations. So if it's a if it's a little slow one day we can uh, bring him in here to get something done on the uh, HVAC system. <laughs> All right, All right, thank you and congratulations. As we mentioned um, uh, this past week, uh, we had two homegoing celebrations, um, one for uh, firefighter Bert and then for freshwater as well, but um, the fire and public safety represented themselves well this week, and uh, we're thankful for those efforts, and we remember those, remember them. Uh, right now, I'd like to call Mr. Rudy Jones forward. Uh, we have an, an honor right now. It, it used to be a gold watch, <laughs> but it's not. But um, this is presented to Rudy Jones in appreciation of 30 years of valuable and dedicated service to the city of Waterloo, Iowa, uh, presented this August 7th of 2017. Um, Rudy's done an excellent job with the city of Waterloo and, and in the community, um, very active on social fronts as well. Um, been with our um, uh, community services for, for many years, um, and a lot of the projects that you see taking place around the community, you probably had no idea that our community development had started those projects. So from helping people that have uh, need emergency services to building new houses to helping with assistance, uh, his office pretty much does everything as long as 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 well as neighborhood services. So uh, we'd like to present you with this plaque and hear a few words that you may have for us, but just a few. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd like to recognize my coworkers over the last thirty years. Uh, the work we do can't get done unless you have a great team, and I've been fortunate to have our great coworkers. But also, it's been good to have uh, very good administrators over the years, and I think I saw. Um, former Mayor Roof, he might be somewhere around, yeah, there he is, who gave me an opportunity in the Neighborhood Services Division. And I also would like to thank all of the individuals in the Neighborhood Associations that uh, give me uh, encouragement and come along beside us as partners over the years. All right, thank you so much. Congratulations, sir. presentations and it's your opportunity to address the City Council uh, and let us know what your thoughts are so uh, please step up to the podium state your name and address and wait, where the button is going? Okay. let us know your thoughts Jim Chapman 224 Birch uh, I got a couple of questions have we sold Sunnyside South yet and the other one is the Rath Administration building. Did we get that back, or do we have to buy it back, or what's the deal? That's it. Uh, have we bought back Rath yet? And have we sold back? Sunnyside? Joel Anderson, Community Planning and Development Director. We uh, have set the date of hearing to sell Sunnyside South um, by development agreement. I believe that's set for next week. Um, and then the uh, Rath Administration building, we are actually uh, in the process of uh, taking that building back or attempting to work with the developer to get that back through the development agreement. We also have the option of using uh, 657A on that. Um, and we started that process as well. Right, thank I you. guess I didn't quite understand that answer. Do we have to buy it back? Do we get it back? or? The wrath. They're taking back. The development agreement notes that they'd have to deed it back to us okay. um, free of charge for their failure to meet the requirements of the development agreement. So we have asked for them to sign the deeds to do that, take those actions. We're also following through with the 657A action, which again would not require us to buy it back. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. On consent agenda number 18, what is and what is the amendment to the amendment? And number two, <coughs> excuse me, I'm fighting a cold. Is there a plan for development of the old flea market lot soon? Soon. The developer is presently market, working at Grand Crossing, was sold a parcel of, of the art center by the Art Center and is trying for an apartment complex in Cedar Falls on First Street. If not, please consider re re <coughs> excuse me again, reacquiring the first, reacquiring the flea market property and sell it to the post 138 for a dollar for much needed parking. Also heard parking was approved on the east side of Fifth Street by overhead door. What's the status on that? <coughs> Sandy Greco, Interim Public Works Director. We just um, scraped off the arrows today. Uh, we will be painting parking stalls on that side this week. So by the end of the week, the no parking signs will be taken down and parking will be allowed by the end of this week. Okay. And the development on the flea market area. No, no, um, just for clarification for the consent agenda, we talked about that. That was for number 18? Yeah. Yes, sir. As you may recall, Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director, as you may recall the state code was changed a couple of years ago that requires us to actually amend plans, um, the urban renewal plans for the TIF districts every time we have um, new projects in them. So periodically you'll see us come through and amend the plans themselves to include the projects that have been approved by development agreement. So this is that action to go ahead and add in, uh, as an example, the convention center project into the urban renewal plan. In terms of the flea market site, we have a, a approved development agreement um, with Mr. Dahlstrom to build a, uh, I believe it's a uh, $3.6 million, 40 to 45 unit building there, and they are in the process of designing that and getting ready to move ahead with uh, construction. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council? Going a second time. I'm Mr. Joseph Hart, and I have a concern or a complaint, whichever you prefer. Address, sir. Uh, north of Down Street, on 4th Street, there seemed to be a dumping area up there, and I don't know if the council is uh, familiar with that area or not, but it's a great concern to me because people are dumping there Every conceivable thing you can think of is being dumped up there. And I'm wondering if there's anything that can be done about that. Is that in a park or where is that at? I'm not familiar. Down Street North is on Fourth Street, the end of Fourth Street across Down. Oh, oh in the uh, Creek up in that area, Oak Creek. Take your pardon? The Old Creek School going towards that back road past. Uh, yes, they are dumping everything up there. All right. I will have staff take a look at that. But you have to state your, your address for the record, sir. You want my address? Yeah, for the record. We have to have name and address <laughs> for the record. My address is 400 Charles Street, Waterloo, <laughs> Alba. All right. We'll have somebody take a look at the dumping. And that's along the road, right? Okay. I have one more, if I may. Yes, sir. <clears throat> What does it take to give speed bumps in your street area? Um, There's a lot of speeding going through there, and I think we need speed bumps. All right. Sandy. Sandy Greco, Interim Public Works Director. In order to um, have a speed hump put in, we do a speed study along with um, um, visibility studies and we go 
over five years of accidents in the area. So if you would re if you're requesting one, I can send a petition to you. We require two thirds of the block to sign that, and then we come out and do our tests and our studies. Sandy, could you just grab his contact information? Sure. From him and then just work from there. Sure. All right. All right. Okay. I don't think he wants to wait to the end of the meeting, so if you just grab it real quick, okay. that'll be sure. perfect. So. And I'd like to talk with the chief, and maybe it's not the appropriate time to do that. So, whenever I can arrange to speak with you, thank you. Uh, Sandy will get your contact information, and then she'll pass it on to the chief as well. Is there anyone else that, Mr. Hudding? Paul Hudding, Leisure Services Director. Um, just want people to know that tonight on the council agenda, um, council will be voting on approval of plans and setting the September 21 bid opening for an exciting project. Um, $997,000 estimated project at the Waterloo Boathouse uh, area. Several enhancements there included driveway, parking lots, trail connections, lighting, seating, and landscaping. The reason I'm up here talking about this is because at 11 o'clock tomorrow at the boathouse, we're going to review those plans with anyone from the public who'd be interested in seeing them. And we'll also explain why we're going to have to um, deflate the inflatable dam um, early. Uh, September 28th, it will be fully deflated for construction. So if you have more questions about this, anyone's uh, free to come tomorrow at 11 o'clock to the boathouse. We'll have the plans and the engineer on site. Thank you. And that's uh, 11 o'clock tomorrow at the boathouse, and you'll have a, a full conversation about that and information. All right. Um, any other any other comments? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Motion to receive and file oral comments. Second. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Also, uh, we have mayor and council monthly reports. Uh, is there anyone that would like to give an update of what's going on in their world? Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, definitely I do. Um, uh, four things here. Um, first of all, um, Mike Gannon from the Iowa Geological Surveys Office uh, met with uh, several, as a matter of fact, seven Greenbrier residents, Jamie uh, Newton and myself, uh, Jamie Newton from Engineering, on the 31st of August uh, to discuss a groundwater issues out in the Greenbrier edition and I would ask uh, Mr. Mayor that the next step in this uh, being is that we've had three uh, sessions and informational kinds of things but the next step I would hope that you would uh, uh, develop a work session to discuss uh, where we go from here and uh, what are the possible aids to the problems that have been identified facing the Greenbrier residents there. The second thing was that on August 24th, uh, Nurk, Nick Burwell from uh, Canadian Northern Railroad and Howard Gillespie from the Federal Railroad uh, Railway Administration, along with Eric Thorson, Jeff Bales, and residents Jim Hoth and Norman Keller, uh, who were affected by the train horn uh, blast, and myself went on about a five-plus-hour quiet zone diagnostic uh, field survey of 31 railroad crossing intersections along uh, the main line and the two spurs. Um, and Jeff Bales and Nick Burwell have uh, stated that they will be putting together various options with associated costs. And I hope that those are seriously uh, looked at and considered for the benefit of the residents that are affected by uh, that, that have been asking for these quiet zones to be developed. Um, the third thing is something that uh, not just residents of, of Ward 3, but also residents of Ward 4 have uh, been upset with for decades. And this is not just something that has come up recently, but I have no idea, other than the cost associated with it, uh, why this has not been corrected. Uh, but the Highway 63 uh, and Esther Street and Hanover Street Railroad intersection there that sometimes will block traffic for 45 to 50 minutes, especially along a road that goes to uh, one of our two uh, uh, hospitals uh, for emergency services as well as other emergency services. 
that are blocked and having to find another way around. Um, and I would like to see some uh, city planning be developed <coughs> for an overpass to be developed there going over that railroad spur from Canadian Northern. Um, and what it, what it basically will do, it will be an economic, uh, as I see, plus to an upturn with increased interest in uh, development, both residential and commercial, uh, increase in emergency uh, safety services, uh, either side of those tracks. And the time for this to me is way overdue. And I again would urge the city planners to come up with a plan with a timetable as how they could get that done. Um, and the last thing is at uh, the last Ward 3 monthly meeting on August 26, several residents in and around Gates Park um, voiced their concerns over the options for the Chamberlain uh, and Gates Park um, uh, kind of uh, redevelopment there. And I just want you to know that none of those that were attending or that were in attendance at this meeting were supportive of the options and they definitely want to have input in on that from here on out. Mr. Mayor, thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Make a motion to receive and file oral comments. Second. Motion's been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, receive the oral comments. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. That's items 1A through B6. And within that are the bills payment this week. $2,949,121.38. That's 2, 949,121.38. Second. All right, the motion has been made with the second. Council questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lynn. Number 1A18. Noel, could you provide the council a list of the additional projects and the related financial information as soon as possible so we are prepared for that public hearing so we know what we're doing? You got it. All and right. the other comment. Um, you know, we all got our tax bills last week. And then I look at these travel requests, and it looks like the city isn't even trying to slow down spending. You know, $2,000 to bring somebody from Paris to put up some art. Part-time people traveling now. $5,000 to go to Washington, D.C. with the whole staff. I don't get it. Um, we... we we keep talking about holding the line on property taxes, but the proof is in the pudding, and well, we're not sh we're sure not doing it with these travel requests. Well, we budgeted uh, during the budget season, and these requests need to stay under the allotted money. I would probably say, if you don't believe they're of grave importance, uh, then vote no against them. But um, these folks need to stay under budget. Um, that we approve for all of these requests. Or if not, they need to find some creative ways to be able to pay for them, which they're listed. So uh, some of these could be from grant funding or other sources, but they need to stay under the budget that was allocated for their travel request. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Also, uh, just to kind of follow up a little bit on Mr. Lind, I think in the past when we've talked specifically about travel, we have asked that the department head, when they go on one of these... Uh, uh, trips that's more than just a, a one-day training event or something like that that they report back to the council what you know what did you learn what did you gather there at that meeting to benefits taxpayers so i think i think that might be something we've kind of lost track of so i just maybe like to remind everybody of that thank you okay all right thank you mr schmidt uh, madam clerk mr jacobs yes mr morrissey yes Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes, no on 1B18 through J. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Weber? <coughs> yes. All right. Uh, someone take number two. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number two is a motion to receive and file proof of publication and notice of public hearing, and that's for the purchase of one 
Ford F-250 crew cab truck for Waterloo Fire Rescue. Second. A motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak with regards to a uh, crew, cab, crew cab truck for fire rescue? Please state your name and your address for the record. David Jarvis, 3145 West 4th Street. Uh, was any search done through the present equipment that the city owns to fill this pickup need by the fire department? I see they are requesting a new pickup. I also note in the finance meeting, they are requesting the purchase of a pack for the new truck. Wouldn't you wait for approval for the purchase of the truck before you request to buy the pack? Sounds to me like the cart before the horse, uh, or did they know that this was already done a done deal before they did this public information meeting? It was scheduled. None of you want to oppose public safety, I'm sure, but at the same time, when you approve it before for the purchase in the in the uh, a, 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 the consent agenda for the purchase of a pack for the new truck. Sounds to me like they already know they're going to get the new truck. Thank you. All right. Do you want to speak to that, uh, Chief Trelaw? Not do you, will you? <laughs> Pat Trelaw, Fire Chief. What was on the uh, fa finance committee uh, tonight was a pre-auth. We have not purchased the pack as of yet. Um, the lead time on that is probably about nine weeks, so we wanted to get the finance committee authorization first. We'll see how it goes tonight on on the truck purchase, but we haven't uh, we haven't committed to anything because it was truly a pre-auth. So, if you do not get this truck tonight, will we still order the pack? No. Thank you. Is there anyone else that has questions? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to close the hearing and file oral comments. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> hearing closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of plans, specifications, form of contract, etc. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Council questions? <coughs> Clerk? Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wupper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. All right, item carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. Motion's been made with a second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wupper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Item carry. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion then to receive, <coughs> file, and instruct the city clerk to read bids. Second. The motion's been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Madam Clerk, please read the bids. The estimate for this was $40,000. We received one bid. It was from Charles Gavis Ford. The bid amount was $45,890.50. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I could just ask a question. I assume we sent out more than one bid. Uh, was there something unique about this that we only got one response? Pat Treeler, Fire Chief, it was uh, advertised and bids were sent out. Um, for that model, I'm told by a local dealer that I spoke with that the state bid price, and, and that's who uh, is before you tonight, Gubas Ford, is uh, it's just somewhat untouchable. There's no money there. Uh, to compete against the, the state bid. And there's different dealers that have different vehicles. Uh, the 250 uh, is awarded the state bid to Gubis and, and a different Ford uh, truck is awarded to a, a different uh, vendor or dealer. So with the state bid out there and they, they know that we would go that way, I'm assuming that's why we didn't get a whole lot of bids in. So we did get the best price, I guess, is what we're all concerned about. Yes, yeah, okay. it's it's state bid. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution approving award of contract to Charles Gabus Ford of Des Moines, Iowa in the amount of $45,890.50 for the purchase of one Ford F-250 crew cab truck 
for Waterloo Fire Rescue and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said documents. Second. second. That motion has been made with a second. Uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. All right. <laughs> Number three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lind. I move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing which is an amendment to ordinance number 5089 regarding extending the established city limits urban revitalization area, which is known as Clara, through December 31st, 2022. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? State your name and address for the record. David Dryer, 3145 West 4th Street. Let the clear expire. Establish a clear in the Old Town area to get housing there with the tax rebate and improved, improve the neighborhood. As I see with the present clear is an expanded footprint of the city requiring more burden on the taxpayers, requiring their, their full, paying their full bill for more expansion of the sewer, the water, etc. Immediately while we have to improve the old town, sewer, water, streets, also at full taxpayer expense. I note the new housing jumped to 73 per, 73 per year during a five year period. 365 houses, 365 new homes, question mark. I, okay. However, how many older homes are now up for sale or empty because folks build a new house? 2011, 2016, five years. How is 2017 doing still at 63 all occupied? How much does a new development cost the city for our share of that sewer, water, street improvement, plowing, et cetera? Say that again. I just missed that last part. It, 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 How much microphone. does a, a new development cost a, the city for our share of that <coughs> sewer, water, street, plowing, et cetera? Cost our share. Are, are they paying? We keep money? expanding the footprint, Mr. Mayor, but the old part of town has sewer and water already, and we're already plowing those streets. All right. Any more questions? That's it. Thank you, sir. Noel, could you respond to some of that? Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. Um, as part of the housing development, the developers would put in the water, sewer, streets, and all that. Uh, Mr. Dreyer is correct that the city would have to, of course, then come along and sweep them, uh, move uh, snow off of them, uh, maintain the water and sewer over time. Um, but of course, they have very long life expectancies but and road repairs over time as well. But immediately, uh, most of those expenses are borne by the developer. Um, with the city doing essentially snow removal and things like that on them. All right. <clears throat> All right, is there anyone else that have particular comments about this item? Okay, I was just making notes. Thank you. You're fine, sir. Is there anyone else that has, okay. My name is Amy Wienens, um, 3507 Augusta Circle is my address. And uh, I'm the owner of Amy Wienens Real Estate. So this tax abatement issue is an interesting one because we deal with it all the time. How does it affect the existing market? How does it affect the new market? And here's what we found is 44% of our buyers in the market today are millennials. That's a shocking statistic, right? Millennials aren't interested in existing homes if they have any kind of repair issues, any kind of maintenance issues, huge yards. They don't even like huge yards anymore. So most of our millennial buyers are targeted towards new construction. Waterloo, here's the thing. We have to sell Waterloo continually. Like that is a big job for us every day to sell Waterloo. Cedar Falls is easy to sell. So the tax abatement um, has been the biggest thing we've had to be able to, to like captivate that audience. Like we can take them out, show them the school system, sell them on our downtown area and everything. But Cedar Falls is an easy move. 
It's an easy target. We got a new elementary being done. I mean, it's just easy over there. So that tax abatement has been uh, our biggest asset in our tool belt to keep a, a buyer in the marketplace in Waterloo. And I think the success speaks for itself. Yellowstone, um, the new Arbor, I mean, not the new Arbors, um, Audubon, like the growth there, all the stuff that happened out at Crossroads. Like that has been huge. And like Crossroads sold out like in 10 minutes. I mean, that was like a two year deal, right? Yeah, two years. I think we. I think that the plan was when they originally started, didn't know if it'd take five. But I mean, the tax abatement has been a huge thing. So if you have a new construction buyer looking, they're not looking at the existing market most likely. Most of the time, they're going to pick new. It's whether they're going to pick it in Waterloo, or they're going to pick it in Cedar Falls, they're going to pick it in surrounding areas. And that tax abatement is a huge factor in it. It allows them the opportunity. We always say it's a good opportunity. You can build equity with a lot of the price points. It's a good opportunity for them to like finish the basement. You know what I mean? On their own. So there's just a lot of things with it, but it, the success of it has been huge. And the detriment to the existing market, the square footage per square, I mean, new construction versus existing, I mean, you get so much more money for the dollar on an existing home. Um, and if the condition is good, and if the colors are right, and the, it's well-maintained and priced correctly, it moves fast. I mean, our absorption rates in the market right now are really low. So there's a lot of activity in the market. Not a ton of inventory, and I think we've got good momentum. I would hate to see that be disturbed and go the opposite direction of the progress we've made, because everybody has worked hard to move us in that direction. Thank you. Is there any other comments? All right. Mr. Mayor, move to close hearing and receive and file oral comments and recommendation of approval of the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor, move to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending ordinance number 5089 as amended by extending the established city limits urban revitalization area known as CLURA through December 31st 2022. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Um, no, you gave us a sheet of paper. Could you explain? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. Just to further reiterate um, what they're basically saying, um, and the GROW Committee went over these numbers as well as part of their recommendation, but you can see the total units uh, per year before the CLURO going back to uh, fiscal year 20, 2003 through fiscal year 2017. Uh, there was 10 years um, before the CLURA. We averaged 119.8 <coughs> units per year. After the CURA, we've averaged 171.17 in a six year period for 51.37 more total units. So that is all single family, uh, duplexes, twin homes, um, as well as multifamily. Looking at single family alone, um, as you may recall, uh, one, of the, one of the goals of the of the CLURA and the GROW Committee was to push for the one and two family units. Single family units alone in that first 10 years before the CLURA, 49.2 units per year was our average. Since then, we've averaged 79.6 in that six year period, so an average of 30.4 more per year in new single family homes. If an average single family home is valued at 187,000, which I use that number because there's uh, actually 13 on the agenda tonight in the CLURA, um, and their average is 187,000. Um, we we've gained 5.684 million this year in new valuation just from those single family homes. Again, if the average was slightly higher at 200,000, it'd be about 6 million. So again, we are gaining a lot of new value that we were not otherwise gaining before the adoption of the CLURA. No, quick question. So, um Given when the inception was till now, uh, that three years is passed for the first houses. So are we going to start seeing some um, something coming on to the tax roads? And that is correct. I mean, the, you know, the idea of the abatement is, is essentially, you know, you're getting those three years, but the taxes are always behind, so you're really getting about four to four and a half years. Now that we've, we've jumped over that first hurdle, now we're getting in homes that were built years ago are coming onto the tax rolls as new homes are being built and gaining this. So um, really we've, we've gone past the hiccup and now we're seeing new valuation come into the city every year from the benefits of the CLURA. Council questions? Mr. Mayor. 
Mr. Morrissey. Yes, uh, Noel, one of the uh, uh, issues I have with this is um, how many or what's the percentage of, of those uh, new home starts in the outline areas that have moved uh, from inner Waterloo areas? Do you have that percentage? We do not. We don't, we don't normally track that? where people are coming from or who exactly is building the house. Is there a way to do that, though? No? Um, I'm going to look to the realtors out there to see. I don't know if the Board of Realtors or somebody would track anything like are that. Are, are some of these new, new folks from outside of the city moving here or expanding? Um, I guess... Uh, what we probably need to do, as Mr. Morris is saying, is start to track those numbers um, and take a look at so we know where those folks are coming from. If you um, if you keep on, we're going to ask you to come to the podium. Okay. Uh, again. <laughs> no, no, no. That, well, the, the reason the reason I'm asking because folks that are in TV land, they're probably interested in hearing what you have to say as much as we are. So, if you wouldn't mind uh, giving us a rough guesstimate, uh, I think it would be called that to kind of let folks know um, where people are coming from in these homes. Kevin Fitro, Skogman Homes, 1323 Fell Ridge Road, Cedar Falls. Uh, as Amy was saying, and, and I can probably answer from a new construction side a little bit more direct because we're dealing with the people. What are they looking at? Are they looking at existing? Are they looking at new? In Audubon Heights, for instance, uh, I would say half of them were debating between Cedar Falls and Waterloo, and the tax abatement kept them in Waterloo versus going over to Cedar Falls. Um, we had a few firefighters, police department, so we are getting local service people. Uh, and then the other part we get, obviously, is, is a lot of John Deere. So they're looking at the fact of, we're coming in, uh, what can I buy over in Cedar Falls? How will my housing value be in four, three years to five years when I leave for Waterloo? That tax abatement is huge for them because they know if they're here for two to three years and typically moving on, they're selling and they're selling that tax abatement with their home as they go, but they can invest more into their home because they can put more product, more amenities in the home on that 15000 that they're not paying in taxes yet. And the choice is, hey, I want to be here. So that, that hopefully that answers your question. We do see a mix. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, uh, from walking around here uh, in in my uh, area or precinct in, in uh, Ward Three, I noted just uh, a, a number of homes that are totally vacant. I mean, these are homes that have been converted into two, three, four, five, maybe six apartments, and I I just feel like you know I'm in favor of of Clara, but I also think that the city of Waterloo needs to develop a, a, a more aggressive plan to do something with the homes that are left vacant um, than what we currently have. And I just hope that that would happen, that there would be a more aggressive approach and incentives for, for people, even low to moderate income people, to uh, purchase those properties rather than having them uh, sit vacant or go to uh, somebody who buys that and then converts it into something that, quite frankly, is illegal given our ordinances that we have now. Absolutely. Absolutely in agreement. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I support Councilman Morris and what he just said as well. But looking at Noel's handout here and what the folks have said, we need this clear really to compete. It's a bigger picture, but um, it, I think it does help us. It points out that people do pay attention to property taxes, but it also helps us down the road, uh, get the houses built here in Waterloo and start getting property tax, um, properties back on the tax rolls. And uh, so I support the mayor and Noel in this, and I would encourage us to, su to support renewing this. All right, thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, I appreciate the, the information that Ms. Sweenans and uh, Mr. Fitro gave us. I know that 
Mr. Fritzrow was one of the original members of the CLORA, and at the time we formed that committee, you know, the reason for that was that at that time, if we dial back six years ago, five or six years ago, I mean, there was not much <coughs> building going on in Waterloo for new construction. It was all going to Cedar Falls, and so we got a group together and tried to figure out, you know, what was the cause of that, and it's a variety of different reasons, but the, the one thing that we seemed to be able to think we could fix short term was this, this tax thing. And having said that, I would remind the council when it comes time to vote uh, on the budget next year, when we talk about property taxes and our high levy rate being a critical factor, this is just a prime example of that. Um, having said that, I think the important thing from what Ms. Weenans and Mr. Fitro said is that, uh, you know, we have, have garnered tens of millions of dollars, I think, of additional value in Waterloo because of this program. So I think it's a great program. I know there was a thought at one time to take away the sunset, and I would not like to see that happen. I'm not sure that five years is the right period of time, but I think I've heard from the developers that that gives them enough of a window to make that commitment to do what they need to do, or the three-year might be just a little bit short. But I do think, going back to what Councilman Morrissey said, Ward 3 and Ward 4 both, if you've got a nice day and you want to take a walk, you would be amazed at the number of vacant houses. And I think what's going to fix that more than anything else is getting jobs coming to Waterloo and getting people moving to Waterloo. And Cedar Falls, their population is growing, so they've got people coming into their lower and, and medium income houses and their new houses in Waterloo. We don't have that, and that's, I think, the, you know, the critical factor here. Anything we can do to get businesses to move to Waterloo and bring their employees with them would, would fix a lot of our problems. So I'm uh, very supportive of this. All right, anyone else? Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call vote. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Ryan carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to suspend the rules. Second. second. Motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Schmidt? Uh, this, no, this. Uh, current sunset is up the end of December, correct? Yeah, we okay. we are. I mean, we're looking at some huge opportunities. So, so Anderson Community Planning Development Director, I, I believe it would be uh, very advantageous for us to suspend the rules. Um, there's a lot of developers looking at the development of lots. They'd like to start this construction season as opposed to the spring. Knowing that this is in place would give them that assurance to go ahead and start with their new uh, land development. So waiving the second and third reading is a critical factor in your opinion? I would believe so, yes. Thank you. Uh, back to me, yes. Yes, Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. All right, item carries. Mr. Mayor, move to consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt said ordinance. Second. Motion has been made with the second, Madam Clerk. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right, thank you, Council. Um, all right, uh, thank you. Number four. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication notice of public hearing on a vacate, sell, and convey of city-owned property located adjacent to 2014 Blackhawk Street in the amount of $800 to Dwayne Eilers. Second. All right. Uh, motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive the recommendation of approval of the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The hearing is closed. 
Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance approving a request to vacate a 33 foot by 106 foot portion of a public alley right away, generally located adjacent to 2014 Blackhawk Street. Okay. The motion has been made with the second. Council question? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. No, is that, um, I'm, I'm sure that's the fair market value in your opinion? No. No winners in Community Planning Development Director. The $800 was based on the average price per square foot of the assessed value of abutting land. So yes, that is what the policy states we will use. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wupper? Yes. Madam Carey? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Okay, that carries. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to consider and pass for the second and third times and adopt said ordinance. Second. Motion has been made with the second. Madam <coughs> Clerk. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Madam Carey? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing the sale and conveyance of a 33-foot by 106-foot portion of a public alley right away, generally located adjacent to 2014 Blackhawk Street, in the amount of $800 to Dwayne Eilers. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Roll call. Roll call vote. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. All right, that item carries. Number five, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Amos. I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that is for a number six digester roof rehabilitation project, contract number 939. Second. That motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak to this particular item on the agenda? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral and written comments. Second. The motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The hearing is now closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a resolution confirming approval of plan specifications, form of contract, et cetera. Second. second. Motion has been made with the second. Council questions? Madam Clerk? Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Right, that item carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. Second. The motion has been made with the second. Madam Clerk? <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. All right, I'm curious. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and instruct city clerk to read bids. Second. The motion has been made with second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Madam Clerk? The estimate was $65,000. We received one bid. It was from Southern Minnesota Urethanes LLC of Caledonia, Minnesota. They provided 5% security. Their bid amount was $42,000. Um, can anyone, same question for this one. Uh, <coughs> one bid, is there some specificity with this or? As Steve Homebrecker, Waste Management Services Director, we contacted multiple people that we thought were capable of doing this and we only received one bid back. So, and we felt good that it was below the estimate. All right, thank you. M Mr. Mayor, one quick question, Steve. Is, is that the um, roof that will now allow us to capture that gas that, that we were selling? Is that the Well, it is project? part of the roof. We uh, previously had this digester <coughs> down for cleaning. There were some issues with the roof and we wanted to inspect it at that point in time and now this is uh, taking care of some of those observations from the inspecting and it, it, the main thing this is is there's an insulation over that roof and there was part of this insulation that was bubbled and we were concerned what that was what the cause for that is and we're basically reinstalling that insulation which will help keep the 
uh, temperature in the digester through the winter months, which will help generate more gas that we are able to utilize within the plant. Thanks. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Madam Clerk? Oh, yeah, I need to. Uh, yeah. Uh, Miss, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion adopting a resolution approving a word of contract to Southern Minnesota Urethanes LLC of Caledonia, Minnesota in the amount of $42,000 and approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance for the number six digester roof rehabilitation project, contract number 939, and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Second. A motion has been made with a second. Madam Clerk. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. All right, that item carries. Uh, six, seven, eight. Six, seven, and eight, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Item number six, I'd like to adopt a resolution transferring ownership of canine Jason to his handler, Officer Tyler Brownell. Second. Oops, I'm sorry. Bill, I'll say the hell. <laughs> Item number seven is ad adopting a resolution approving temporary removal of no parking signs on both sides of street between the 1500 and 1700 blocks of West Donald Street during the reconstruction of Wakanda Drive between Candlewick Road and Cedar Bend Street. And number eight is adopting a resolution approving right of way license agreement with Crook Trip Inc. of La Crosse, Wisconsin allowing use of city right of way for a communication system and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document. Second. second. That motion has been made with the second, but um, I'd like to just read a quick statement about number six. Um, there were a couple of Facebook posts and other things and, um, you know, I was trying to explain to people, I hadn't heard council have full objection <laughs> to number six. Um, so I just wanted to state that for the record and there has not been a vote yet that will be taken in a couple moments but um, earlier today uh, released a press release from uh, some very caring citizens within our community and I want to just take time to read that and it's uh, tonight the Waterloo City Council is expected to approve transfer of ownership of Waterloo Police K-9 Jason to hand handler Officer Tyler Brown, Brown, Brownell. Uh, officer Brownell has a medical condition that may prevent him from serving as a police officer. K-9 Jason will assist Officer Brownell with important daily, daily functions as a service dog. Jason is approximately halfway through his service life. Officer Brownell has agreed to pay $4,000 to the police K-9 fund to acquire Jason. Waterloo Police leadership and the mayor's office are in full support of the transfer of ownership. Uh, mayor Hardy and Chief Troca work with an anonymous donors to secure, um, earlier it was $2,500 towards the purchase, but we received a check um, of $1,500 by another anonymous donors that does not want to see Officer Brownell spend any money out of his pocket or other officers. This act of generosity and kindness makes us Waterloo proud. The city of Waterloo has three certified dogs that work and live with their handlers every day. The dogs are routinely transferred to the handler at the conclusion of their service due to the strong bond formed between the two, and this was a unique situation. Uh, Chief Trelka stated, this gift is a token of appreciation for the service of Officer Brownell has rendered to the city of Waterloo, and we are pleased these partners uh, will be able to stay together. So. I wanted to clear the record because council probably received uh, some emails as I did as well, pretty much not knowing what was going on with regards to the situation, but we've had some citizens step forward anonymously to um, cover the cost. Um, so it's just a formality of us being able to vote and council is still free to vote their desires, but um, that's what transpired today as well. So, sir. Boulevard. I also would like to speak to number six. And what I'd like to suggest is I understand that you have collected some money to support this uh, negotiation or whatever you're doing, but I'd like to come at it a different way. I think you ought to sell this dog to the man for a dollar. And I think that should be a gesture from the city. That, uh, that this guy has given his life uh, 
well-being to that dog and to us, the citizens of this community. We give a lot of money away. We give money away to millionaires. And I, I, I as a dog owner, would understand if he's had the dog as long as he's had it, that's a, that's a major thing to lose that dog. And I think you ought to treat it just like you have treated many, many things with thousands and thousands of dollars involved. Sell it to him for a dollar. If you got, if you got money coming in from collections or donations or whatever, uh, put them in the fund for the canine program and it, with, with uh, some kind of his name attached to it that, that, that he's contributed to it. But as far as the city is concerned, I don't think the city should be <laughs> taking this guy now because he's physically unable to, to do his job and require him to have to come up with any money. But I think it would be more than appropriate to sell this dog to this guy for a dollar. Now he feels good, he's got the dog, you got some money, you can put it in Chief Trelka's canine program to, to support that with, with honor to this guy. I mean, you know, I, I don't know how you phrase that stuff, you know, you guys know how to do that kind of stuff. But I think that would be way more appropriate than, than the way you're handling it right now because I think that shows that we the citizens, we the city, honor this guy for what he has done. He's put his life on his line for us and unfortunately, he's, he's had a bad break. And I think it's the least we can do to do what we can do for him. Forget about the money as far as he's concerned. Chief Chuck, I'm sure, can take, get that in the right place to do some good with respect to the individual himself. So again, I just think that you ought to change your resolution, sell the dog for a dollar. He's got it, it's over with. The, the money that you come up with, put it in the K-9 program. I'm sure they can use that money. I, and it's, it's great that we've got people that have donated. And uh, that's just my suggestion. And I really wish you'd consider that. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Um, the, the, um, the, the, the situation is kind of unique in that normally at the end of seven, eight years, um, I believe the handler and the dog re and the uh, canine remain together, right, afterwards. This was a different one because because of the age. And so actually that number is a number that was worked out with, I believe, our police department and community members stepped forth. So we found some donors and the donors had made sure that um, the good officer is not spending spending a penny for it, not even a dollar. So. Um, that's, I'm working with the police department. We work together to get to this situation. So thank you so much for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to, like to speak to this item? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I, I like that idea. I move to amend resolution transferring ownership of K-9 for $1. Let's just add. But you want him to give a dollar. Just and instead of zero. Just make it simple. Let's just say one dollar. That's you know the kind of a customary amount, and that shows our goodwill. And then the money raised for what the value of that dog is, we're out of it. He's out of it. He doesn't have to worry about it. That shows <coughs> our support for well. The money his will service. have to go back because they donated it specifically for that purpose. So the is, money will have to go back to the to the to the folks that donate it. Is that right? Absolutely. If you gave money for something, you probably want it to go, go to there. So they gave money specifically for a good officer to have, but it's up to council's discretion okay, then, what you would like then, to do. In other words, he's not gonna have to spend any of his own money. It's no, free and alone. clear, it's all Absolutely. Alone. Okay. But if it's to the will of the council. <clears throat> Well, we can put it that way. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I deferred it to you. Plus well, three I mean, I didn't know that money was going to go back. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they, they donated okay, it specifically right. for that. All right. All right. Um, I mean, and Mr. K. Meyer brings up an excellent point. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I, yes, I just want to thank you and Tra uh, Director Tralka for working this out, and I think it's uh, the right thing to do, and I think we should all support this. I would agree with uh, 
what everybody said and give him the dog. Uh, thank the citizens who stepped up. And I also want to thank uh, Tyler for his service uh, to our military in this city and the city as well. So thank you. Um, Chief, would you like to say anything? Or? I know this has been a tough situation too. Uh, Dan Trelka, Chief of Police. I mean, this is uh, Waterloo stepped up again. This is simply remarkable. Uh, the figure of $4,000 uh, collectively with Officer Brunel, uh, Sergeant Bowes, the K-9 unit, uh, some of my staff, we felt that uh, we, we had the dog appraised what it resale value would be, and uh, they came up with a price of $4,000 from the company that we purchased the dogs through. We felt this was the most reasonable, sensible, and fair way to go about this, knowing that uh, a, a bunch of officers were going to raise the money so that Officer Brunel could get this dog. I felt that by putting the value on it and covering that cost, we would meet the uh, least amount of resistance from the council. Uh, it just seemed fair and reasonable. So I, I thank the council for their support. Uh, again, Waterloo has amazed me. All right. Any other questions, uh, seven and eight? Madam Clerk. That, motion, that amendment was adopted? Yes. Uh, yes, okay. okay. Mr. Jacobs? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welpern? Yes. All right, Officer Brownell, thank you so much for all your service. We have one item left. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I move to approve change order number one for total increase of $3,223.59 to Wilson Custom Tree of Cresco, Iowa, in conjunction with the 2017 spring stump removal project. Second. The motion's been made with the second. Paul, you're asking for more money. Paul Hudding, Leisure Services Director. Uh, correct. Uh, these are additional stumps that um, we wanted to get out in a timely fashion. We're actually bringing forward another stump removal contract, so it would have been added to the next contract had we not taken care of it now. Just trying to do it as timely as possible for the residents. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, well, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to be made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned.